online viewers, I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. I'm reading from Hebrews 4, verses 14 to 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of God is blessed. Father, we come to you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Our high priest who was touched by all the feeling of our infirmities. He is forever interceding for us. As our mediator, he declares us righteous based on his righteousness. As our advocate, you defend us and declare us not guilty when the enemy brings accusations against us to condemn us. The surety of the new covenant is your precious blood, O oh God. We thank you. We bless your name. We pray that your word will illuminate our hearts and lives this morning, that it will bring peace in these perilous times. We ask all these mercies in the wonderful, wonderful, precious name of Jesus. Amen.
we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save.
Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. I am happy you could join me today for the rich word of God. I am Stephen Muhammad, pastor of the Balmain Worship Center. My discussion with you today is on a subject which we can all relate, dealing with tough times. My text is taken from the book of Job, chapter 14, verses 1 to 2. Man born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. He springs up like a flower and withers away. Like a fleeting shadow, he does not endure. May God bless the reading and hearing of his wonderful words of life. Tough times come to all people. This was the experience of the patriarch Job. He had lost all his flocks, all his servants, all his children, and all his other possessions. His body was covered with sores. His wife encouraged him to curse God and die. His friends were less than comforting. Yet, Job did not sin against God. Tough times can be terrifying and can affect different people differently. Some become bruised and broken, while others use them as stepping stones to greater things. Tough times can either make people bitter or better. How should we respond to tough times? Well, first, do not worry. Worry is like a rocking chair. It will give you something to do, but it will take you nowhere. For many, it is difficult to avoid worrying. The late Sir Walter Raleigh once said, it would be easier for the cook to command the kettle to stop boiling than it would be for me to command my mind to stop worrying. Yet, our Lord Jesus Christ clearly commands us not to worry. He says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Matthew 6 and 34. Worry is a habit that we can break. The issue is, how can we really treat with worry effectively? Let me suggest a few ways we can do so. One, by remembering that God is our Father and he does all things well. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 26. See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Matthew 6, verses 28 through 30. We should completely trust in our Heavenly Father for his blessings. He knows our needs, and he cares about us more than we can imagine. If we are worrying, we are not trusting God to deal with our situations as he said he would. We are forgetting who he is and his wonderful promises. 
Worry is just not a disposition or an attitude. Worry is sin because at its root is a lack of trust in our Heavenly Father. Two, we can treat with worry by praying and trusting God for his best for our lives. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. God loves us and wants us to ask for his help. When we do, he will answer. Three, we can treat that worry by focusing on the answer rather than dwelling unnecessarily on the problem. We must carefully and prayerfully consider all our options and then leave the entire affair completely in the hands of our loving, caring Father. When we have done so, we can rest in Him and enjoy His peace, however difficult the situation may appear to be. After we ask God for His help and we do what He asks us to do, we must let go and let Him take control. The hymn writer tells us, Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Yes, we can deal with tough times by remembering that God is our Father and he does all things well. But we can also deal with tough times by looking at the situation realistically and objectively. Understand that tough times are not as destructive as they may appear to be at first. In fact, many of the problems we fear would result from such times never really materialize. A person once said, I have had a lot of trouble in this life most of which never really happened. It is both profitable and instructive for us to reflect on the many things we feared would happen that never actually did. We should not deny that we occasionally face tough times, neither should we trivialize them. However, we should not become painfully pessimistic and negative. Regardless of how hard things appear to be, they will not bring us to the point of total destruction if we are trusting in God to deal with them for us. Tough times can be painful, but remember, we are not alone in these experiences. Many people are facing even tougher times. Third, we can deal with tough times by reaching out to others in need. Instead of dwelling only on our situation, we must be willing to reach out to others in need and become instruments of blessings to them. Tough times provide us with opportunities to render good to others. When the storms of life are beating upon us, we should respond by encouraging others in similar situations to look to the Lord as the answer. Remember the lovely chorus, Christ is the answer to all my longings. Christ is the answer to all my needs. Savior, baptizer, the great physician. Oh, hallelujah, he is all I need. What we often see as great challenges God often sees as great opportunities. The Lord may be saying to us, See, I have placed before you an open door that no man can shut. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 8. During tough times, 
God gives his people opportunities to experience his miraculous workings in ways that we have never experienced before. One lovely verse of a song says, If all were easy, if all were bright, where would the cross be? Where would the fight? But in the hardness God gives to you, chances of proving what he can do. In tough times, we can experience God deeply in our hearts, in greater ways than we have ever known him. We live in a culture that worships economic security and affluence. Many find personal peace in these things, and if they lose them, in consequence, they lose their peace of mind. On the other hand, tough times cause some people, by God's grace, to turn to him and become stronger. Difficulties help them to become more receptive to spiritual truths. There are many idols endemic in our society, entertainment, money, recreation, sports, and others. We spend much time and energy trying to amuse ourselves to death. Sometimes, tough times break down the idols in our hearts and drive us to serious re-examination of self. The more we focus on the Lord, the more we become open to spiritual truths and his working in our lives. We can deal with tough times by rejoicing in the Lord. The Bible says, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Here the prophet was referring to economic recession and possible destruction of his nation. In verse 16, he says, I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come upon the nation invading us. In this difficult situation, he could say, I will still rejoice in the Lord. I will still be joyful in my God. Verse 18. The ultimate source of our joy is not in pleasant conditions, not in the good people around us, and not in the fun things we do although all these are very important. It is in God himself. The Bible says, You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Psalm 16, verse 11. Meditating on him as our father, and on what he has so graciously done for us through his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, vastly increases our joy. We can have joy in any situation because of our relationship with God. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3 and 16. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 and 8. Doubt grips our hearts, and we are tempted to question our identity and consequently our security. We can have joy in knowing that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6 and 23. 
God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. All who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. John 1 and 12. Remember too, there's never a day so dreary, there's never a night so long, but the soul that is trusting in Jesus will somewhere, somehow, find a song. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Our Lord Jesus Christ wants to empower us to deal effectively with tough times, but we must first submit ourselves to him as Savior and Lord. If you have not done so as yet, I urge you to do so. It is quite simple. Acknowledge you are a sinner, Romans 3 and 23. Believe in him only as your Savior and Lord, Romans 10 and 9. Confess him before others, Romans 10 and 10. Do it now, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. Tomorrow may be too late. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your prescription for us to deal with tough times. And we know that as we follow your prescriptions, we can deal effectively with whatever times come our way. Receive our thanks, our wonderful Father, for your wonderful and gracious promises, your promises which are always true. You are always faithful to your word. And so today we give you thanks and praise and glory and honor. Thank you, Lord, for the answer to all of our problems. Bless your people in Trinidad and Tobago and bless your people everywhere. Bless this nation, Lord, and bless the nations of the world and cause that people who do not know you will somehow submit to your Lordship and would receive you as Savior and Lord of their lives. We thank you for doing so, for the glory of your name and for the blessings of your people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Hello everyone. I just wanted to take the time today to recognize mothers. Today is Mother's Day. Motherhood is a gift from God. Mothers are a gift from God to us. We thank God for all mothers and their contribution to our lives. If it was not for mothers, uh, we would not have been here. God chose mothers as a gift to humanity. And we thank God for his blessings. In acknowledging this, we acknowledge all mothers today. I think about my own mother, I miss her. She's gone on to be with the Lord. I think about other mothers. I think about for many, while today is a happy day, for some it's uh, sad. And we think about them and we remember them. And I thank you all mothers for the contribution you make to, to our lives and uh, to everything. I just want to bless you today and wish you a happy Mother's Day. From my family and I, I wish you a happy Mother's Day, not just from my immediate, but my extended family. We wish all of you a happy Mother's Day and God's blessings on your life. Let me pray. Father, I thank you today for your loving kindness. I thank you for 
mothers everywhere. I pray a special blessing on their lives today and the difficulties that some feel today also we remember them i pray god that you will bless them lord that you will strengthen them lord that you will give them your peace i thank you for mothers i thank you for their love i thank you for their kindness i thank you for their security I pray today I speak blessings upon their lives, each and every one. Bring strength, bring comfort, bring hope, Lord. Provide for the needs of mothers emotionally, spiritually, and otherwise. We thank you for them today, and we worship you. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day.